Good afternoon, and thanks for joining this month's GP Tips and Tricks on Basic Reconciling in a General Ledger. I'm Dee Bowers, and I'll be your moderator. So before we jump in, I'm going to briefly go over how to use the webinar pane. Uh, so on your uh, monitor, you should see an arrow on the right side of your screen. If you click that arrow, you'll be able to toggle the webinar pane between the open and closed position. You should also be able to see a small chat window. Feel free to enter your questions in throughout the presentation. We'll be answering those at the end of the webinar during our Q&A session, as time allows. And now's a great time to also check your audio settings. So if you've called in on your telephone, please make sure you have the telephone option selected. And if you're using your computer, please make sure you have the use mic and speakers option selected. So I just also want to note that this webinar is being recorded. And we'll be sending out the slide deck and a link to the recording within 48 hours. So if you're interested in watching this again or sharing it with colleagues, just keep an eye out for that email. So with that, I'd like to go ahead and introduce today's presenters. First, we have Megan Fall who's a senior consultant within our Dynamics GP practice at Armanino. Megan has over six years of experience with Dynamics GP and is also certified a Microsoft certified professional in GP financials, supply chain, and implementation. And I'm also pleased to introduce Sahara Ahmed, a consultant within our Dynamics GP practice here at Armanino. Uh, Sahara has years of experience supporting and implementing Dynamics GP as a Microsoft certified professional in GP financials, inventory, and order processing. So it's great to have you guys both here. And with that, I'm going to turn the presentation over to Sahar. Good afternoon, afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. Today we're going to be covering um, best practices for reconciling, helpful reports, creating a smart list for transaction detail. Um, we're also going to cover the reconcile to GL, GL tool, followed by adjusting entries, and then we're also going to go through a demo. So best practices for when performing a reconcile. We recommend that this is done monthly. The reason why is that we want to make sure that the system is working as it should. So if you do not do a monthly reconcile, please start doing that. It will be very helpful for you. Um, certain areas to cover when identifying reconcile differences would be um, differences between transaction date and posting date. We'll go over that in the next slide. And then voided transactions. This is a big one. Um, when voiding transactions, the system date populates in the window instead of the date that the transaction was put, posted. So a good thing to double check is that when voiding a transaction, you are changing the date to the original posting date um, to make sure that it is, in fact, posting on the same date so all of your reports do match up as well. Um, another thing to look at is distribution accounts. A lot of the times, um, distribution accounts are incorrect on the transactions. Another thing to look at is the posting setup. So down below we do have um, a screenshot. What you do is you select the series. For here it's sales. The origin would be receivable sales entry. And we want to make sure that it's post to general ledger and post through to general ledger and also allow transaction posting. This is important because if post to general ledger is selected and not post through general ledger, the batch will post on the subledger, but it won't post all the way through the GL. So what's going to happen is there's going to be a system-generated batch sitting in financials awaiting to be reviewed and posted. Another thing in this window to look at is the posting date. Um, to default the posting date, we recommend to do it by the batch and not the transaction. So a little bit more information on dates. GP has a variety of dates that we use. Um, the ones that I would mainly focus on is transaction date and GL posting date. But document date is the subledger date. Posting date, GL posting date, is the date the transaction will post to the GL. General ledger transaction date is the date that determines the period the transaction will show on your financial statements. The posted date is the date the transaction was actually posted. The apply date is the subledger apply date. The apply posting date is the GL apply date. And the date invoice paid off is the date an invoice was fully applied. So again, something that you should only focus on is, again, the transaction date and the GL posting date. So reports. Your true reconcile should be between the RM or PM historical age trial balance and the GL trial balance reports. If both of these match, you will not necessarily need to run the reconcile to GL tool for that month. Um, below, I have also included the historical age trial balance, how to run those for AP, AR, and GL. 
Um, for the GL, what you want to focus on is the date range and making sure you're picking the correct account. For AP and AR, you want to make sure you're selecting, again, the correct GL posting date and excluding unposted applied credit documents, zero balance activity, and fully played um, documents. I also have a link to banking on how to run those reports as well. I also want to um, make sure that you're aware last month we did cover bank reconciliation, so also that's something you should definitely check out um, for our previous webinar. We also, go, we also went over that. Um, for manual reconcile example for AP using SmartList, the reason why this would be a good one is because it'll bring down all of the detail for both the subledger and um, financials. So here up the top we have our smart list for payables transactions. We included an additional column for posted date in which we included um, the date range of April 1st through the 30th. And then for our account transactions, the two additional columns that we included were the originating document number and the originating posted date. Once these smart lists are complete, you can export both of them to Excel and either you can manually comb through each transaction to match or you can set up a VLOOK to look back at the document number on the subledger and the originating document number on the GL side. Just to let you know, this is effectively what the GL, the post, I'm sorry, the Reconcile to GL tool does. This is the manual option. Um, Sometimes people like it just because then they can do their own kinds of sorts and things instead of just using the uh, Reconcile to GL tool. So we just wanted to show you that as well. Now the Reconcile to GL tool. The Reconcile to GL spreadsheet is not a true reconciliation. It does not go into GP and automatically fix the difference. What it does is the tool was intended to be an aid to help you identify distribution differences. So here's the window that um, 2013 is looking at. 2010 is a little bit different. Um, what's not included in 2010 is inventory and bank reconciliation and also the snapshot below with the beginning balance and the ending balance and the differences. However, that area below with the subledger GL and the difference, that is actually included in the Excel spreadsheet. Another thing is, is the output file um, automatically saves to a location, but in the 2010 version, it's not there. It will automatically open to Excel and needs to be manually saved. So here are what the results look like for the Reconcile to GL tool. Um, we see at the top that there's the unmatched transactions and the potentially matched transactions. I would recommend to ignore the matched transactions. Um, what we want to look at here is if you notice on the payable side we have a whole bunch of lines that are listed on the unmatched transactions and on the GL side, we don't have those transactions listed. That is a red flag. For me, that tells me that things haven't been posted, which makes me want to check the um, posting setup in GP to make sure that it's set to post all the way through. Now, the potentially matched transactions means there's a number of criteria that GP is looking at. Um, it's matching the, for this one, it's matching the voucher number, the originating control number from the GL, the transaction source from AP, and the originating transaction source the posting date and the transaction date on account, um, the on account amount and the debit amount or credit amount. Now another thing is, is um, at the bottom you do again have that area that shows you the difference. So again, just ignore the matched transactions and just look at the potentially matched transactions and the unmatched transactions. So we're going to go over our demo. So. Here we're going to go over a little bit of looking at that posting setup, the posting account defaults, reports. Okay, so the first thing that we want to look at is the posting setup. So if I go to Microsoft Dynamics GP, Tools, Setup, Posting, Posting again, and then for Series I'll go ahead and select Purchasing. For Origin I will go ahead and select Payables Transaction Entry. So there's our red flag. It's showing us that we don't have that post through option selected. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. Um, I also see that our posting date is from the batch. And then we also see that there's also the paths included for the posting journal. So this is just a little bit something extra. If you want specific posting journals, um, 
to not print, go ahead and unselect those posting journals. Okay, another thing we want to look at is posting defaults. So if we go to Microsoft Dynamics GP Tools, Setup, Posting, Posting Accounts. Now, if you do not have your default account set up on the customer card or the vendor card or on the items, this is where GP will look for the um, defaults. So if I look at purchasing, we do have default accounts set up. So here's another place that you would want to look just in case. So moving on to our reports, if we go to reports, financial, and trial balance, here I'm just going to select detailed. I'm going to go ahead and modify. And what I want to do is go ahead and enter a date range. So I'm going to enter April 1st. We'll do 2017 just because GP defaults to that on my image. We'll enter that restriction. And then we're also going to change the range to account. And here we're going to select the account that we want to look up. So for payables, we would go ahead and enter that payables account and insert. So this would be the report that you are going to tie your subledger to. Now for subledger, I'm going to go ahead and look at, if I go to reports, purchasing, trial balance. And I want to change this to the historical age trial balance. Now here when I modify, I want to change the print age as of date to um, be the, either I can do between April 1st and the 30th, or I can do the enter date for, or I could do the enter date of the end of the month. Um, here what I want to do is I want to exclude the unposted applied credit amounts, um, the zero balance activity, and the fully paid documents. We also want to make sure that you, um, if you see in the middle it says transactions for report using, it says GL posting date is selected. That's another thing that happens often is that people end up having the document date selected. And if that does not match your GL posting date, it can throw off your report. So we, if you're comparing a subledger report, a subledger trial balance to the GL trial balance, you want to make sure GL posting date is set as the selection uh, range. Otherwise, uh, you could have mismatched data. So if your trial balance from the GL matches your subledger, then you don't necessarily need to run the reconcile tool. So here, if our, sorry about that, if our, um, if our report from the subledger and the GL do not match, then I want to move forward to showing you the smart list route. So if I go to Microsoft Dynamics GP and smart list, let's go ahead and go to financial, expand account transactions, and click on the asterisk. Let me expand that. Here I want to go ahead and include a column for the GL date. So I'm going to go to add, which will be the posted date. And then another column that I do want to add is actually the originating document number. Oops, sorry about that. So those are the two additional columns that I will add. Now here is the filter portion that is really important. What we want to filter on is the date range. So if I click on the date, I want to do basically an in-between for April. And then I also want to go ahead and identify the account number that I want to look at. Oops, sorry about that. The date was incorrect again. Oops. 
So here I'm going to select the account number that I want to look at. And then lastly, I also want to include the series. Um, here you want to go ahead and select if it's going to be um, purchasing that you want to look at or sales. Um, once that's filtered, you can go ahead and export this one and just go ahead and name it your account transactions. Now for your subledger, my example that I'll give you would be purchasing. Um, we're going to expand the payables transactions. And then here we're going to include an additional column for posted date. And here the only thing that you need to do is filter your column down to the posted date range. And here we would do the April dates of April 1st through the 30th. Once those are exported, you can again manually comb through it or you can do a VLOOKUP. But again, we can go back to the Reconcile to GL tool, which will do the exact same thing. So let's go ahead and close out the smart list. So our Reconcile to G GL tool is under Financials, Routines, and Reconcile to GL. Now here, the reconciliation, re reconciliation number shows that I've completed this reconcile five times. Um, the date that I want to change to would be the 30th. Oops. And then my date range would be from April 1st through the 30th. having some problems with dates today. Okay, so our account number did default because I've run this before, and then our module, I'm choosing the payables management. My output file did default because I've run this before. Now when I hit process, it's gonna update this um, bottom portion which shows the differences. So we're gonna go ahead and process. So now this has updated me to show me a little bit of the snapshot of my differences. My Excel um, file will automatically open and already I see a red flag for the unmatched transactions. We did see under the posting setup that I was, po I was set to post to the jail but not through to the jail. So that's where we see these differences, which means that in financials I should have system generated batches that need to be posted. If we move down to this potentially matched transactions, we already see the red highlighted on account amount is different from what's listed here on the debited side. So there's a difference in amount, but all the other criteria matches up. So again, the only thing you're focusing on is the unmatched transactions and the potentially matched, tra matched transactions. So moving forward, now that you know the difference. Say that we have distributions that are missing on the GL side. Um, if you find distributions on the RM or PM side that are not in the GL side, make sure that you have completely verified everything as far as date, dates go and as far as all, all of your reports go. Um, another thing that you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and enter an adjusting entry in, on the GL. So under financials in general, here what you want to do is make a reference to what that document number is, just so you do know that this was basically an adjusting entry for that amount. And then the transaction date, you want to make sure it's the same date, so again, everything matches up. And then you're going to be using the same accounts that are listed on the subledger side on the GL, because again, they didn't go all the way through, the, through to the GL. Now the part that is a little bit confusing is if your subledger is off. Now, if your subledger is off, something I want to point out on the sales side is do not run the routine of the paid transaction removal because what that's going to do is move everything to history and it's going to be a little bit more difficult to fix. So it's best if you first complete a reconcile monthly and then run that paid transaction removal tool because, again, that will move everything to history. Um, the variances could be if you run check links, sometimes if there is a corrupt 
transaction, it will pull it out of GP on the subledger. So that can be one issue or everything posted to incorrect accounts. So for example, if we're in AP and we do have a document but it's posted to the incorrect accounts, the first thing you want to do is go into posting setup and change the posting to post to and not through to the jail. So when we enter that adjusting entry on the subledger and we first do that void, we want to make sure it doesn't hit the GL. So we do that void, we post it, and then we go into financials and delete that batch, that void. The reason why we do that again is that we don't want to double enter anything on the GL. We just want to fix whatever's missing on the subledger. So once that void's complete, you can go ahead and re-enter that transaction and post it. And then again, you would go back into financials and delete that second posting journal. Um, after that, you would want to go back and again, change your posting setup to post to and post through. So going back to our PowerPoint, that ends our demo, but again, just to go over the correct steps, you wanna make sure that everything's done monthly. You wanna make sure that your reports from your subledger and your GL match. If they do not match, then I recommend running the Reconcile to GL tools. And if you do not want to do the Reconcile to GL tools, again, you have that smart list function, which you can definitely do, which is mimicking the same thing. Now, we've had a couple of questions come through. And Megan, if you want to go ahead and address them. Sure. OK. So first question is, um, on the regular trial balance report, it doesn't automatically move data into older buckets like the historical trial balance does, why is this? And the answer to that is um, the historical age trial balance has a built-in aging process because of that date that you put in the age as of date. That tells it to run an automatic aging process on the historical age trial balance. So for the regular trial balance, you have to actually run the AR aging routine or, I'm sorry, it can be the AR aging or it can be the um, AP aging, whichever sub, sub ledger you're in. You just have to go to routines and aging and run that, and that will update the buckets so that uh, the regular trial balance shows them, shows data in the proper um, aged buckets. Um, so second question is, um, Customer summary data is incorrect. Um, why is this and how do I update customer summary data? So if you're going to your um, customer summary page, you just want to be careful how you're looking at that because GP defaults it to show summary um, with amount since last close. And if you don't close exactly on 1-1 or you know, whatever, if your fiscal periods are July to June, it, you know, as of July 1, um, then it's going to include data that is, in, is technically in the wrong, in the um, next year. So if you're looking at the amount since last close as your customer or vendor summary amounts, it's going to be wrong. So there's, it's in a drop-down menu, and you would just want to select either the um, fiscal year or calendar year option and those are date specific so those would go off of your period setup um, so that should give you better summary data if it really is off even on those then you would want to run um, there's a utility for reconcile it's it's um, if you're in uh, receivables you go to utilities and select reconcile um, for receivables and payables, uh, I think it's just the straight reconcile, and then if you do the sales orders, there's one that says reconcile dash sales orders. That's not the one you want. You want the regular receivables or payables reconcile tool. And there should be an option in there that says reconcile summary, customer summary data or vendor summary data. You can run that utility. Uh, it should update your customer summary data. Um, all right, we've got a few more questions. Um, to go over the dates again, if 
uh, what if you don't want to change the revenue or expense GL transaction for, oh, I see, so for voiding, if you don't want to void it in the prior period, you want to void it in the current period, then yes, you're right. Just let it default for the system date. We just mainly want you to double check that voided date because um, sometimes it throws people off if it, uh, since it just defaults to the system date, the current system date. Um, so that's up to you. If you want to change it to the prior month, if it's not a closed month, um, you can do that. If you would prefer to just let it go in the current month or in the current period, you can just let the date stay. Um, those are perfectly good options. All right, so another. So someone has a problem where they're running a historical age trial balance and it has it always has really old transactions that are actually closed or completed. Most items are okay, but the total is never accurate because of a few items. Um, that could potentially be a few different issues. If it's, if it's in receivables, um, receivables, you have to actually run that utility called remove paid transactions and that's what pushes everything to history and clears it off of the aging. So if you don't run that, even if it's fully applied, it, will, it could potentially still show on your aging report. So I would suggest running that first if you're talking about a receivables trial balance. Um, if you're talking about payables or if that is um, receivables but you've already done that routine, then I would say just double check those transactions and confirm they really are 100% fully applied. I, I've seen it before where the, uh, let's say they were invoices that are showing up and you think they shouldn't be. The, if the payment is off by a cent, it won't be considered fully applied. So you might just have to double check your amounts and um, if they're not exact, then they're still going to show up on your aging. Um, if, you, if you've double checked all of that and it all looks like they should be, for all intents and purposes, gone, I would suggest running the reconcile or you can um, send us a note to the support desk and we'll help you look at the settings and see if there's some reason why those are not getting pushed to history. Um, okay. Let's see, how often should subledger AR and AP transaction removal be done? Okay, so for if you're talking about the paid transaction removal, payables doesn't require it. Payables, um, just as soon as it's fully applied, it goes to history. AR is the only one that you actually have to run that routine in order to push uh, fully paid transactions to history. Um, so. Uh, let's see how often. I would probably run that once a month or once a week, um, just depending on what your process is. You definitely want to do it during your, as part of your month end procedure, just because if you don't, then uh, your aging buckets could be off. Um, you know, like you were saying, we were saying before, it could show up on, a, on an age trial balance where it really shouldn't. Um, but we definitely do say go through the reconciling steps uh, first just to be sure because as soon as you run that uh, remove paid transactions in AR you can, and it moves it to history, it is stuck. It cannot be voided. So if you think you might need to void something, um, look at it before you run that rem uh, remove paid transactions. Um, okay, there's a couple more questions, but I think they're going to require um, us to contact the person directly to look at their system and see um, and see what their settings are doing. So I'm going to uh, not answer those at this time, but we will follow up via email um, from the support desk. And we also have our contact information on the next slide if you're interested. Also, please be sure to go to our website and the Microsoft Dynamics link to look at previous blogs and webinars. Especially for sure. maybe that, um, the uh, banking one, the bank transactions, one from last, uh, last month, it might uh, be relevant to this one as well.
Sure, and we'll go ahead and send out an email uh, along with the slide deck recording and include those links for you guys um, along with the, the blog posts around reconciling. So uh, I think that wraps up our Q&A session for now. Uh, Megan and Sahar will contact the rest of you directly if you had a question that went unanswered. Um, but if you have more specific questions, feel free to contact them directly through the email address here. Um, so thank you for spending your afternoon with us. And as you exit, there's going to be a quick survey. So if you could just take a minute and let us know how you're doing, and uh, that would, we'd really appreciate it. So thanks so much, and have a good afternoon.